Hello, my little friend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like filming right now. Can I do an experiment on you? Yes. Okay. Yes, Lily. Yes, my Lily. <laughs> okay, so what? Hold on, let me set my camera up. What I want you to do is to point your finger at the wall and then turn back as far as you can. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay, close your eyes and visualize yourself going further back than what you just did. Tell me when you're done. Literally feel your shoulder rotating, just going back further than the first time when you did it just now. Okay, you're going to visualize one more time and this time imagine pointing your index finger at the wall and literally turning your arm a full 360. What, like one of those owls that turns their head all the way. Feel your shoulder rotating. Go ahead. Okay, now I want you to do it again in real life. Like pick it up and go back as far as back as you can. Go ahead. <gasps> what the heck? <laughs> okay, I didn't expect Wait, that. What the heck? I don't like that. What? He's not supposed to do that. <laughs> no, exactly. What the heck? Did you see it? Let me show you. Look at the first time my friend Vivian turned back as far as she thought she could. And here is how far she turned back after I asked her to visualize herself turning a full 360. She had the potential to turn that far from the beginning, but she didn't the first time. Why? She didn't believe it. The potential was there the first time. The only difference is her beliefs changed and she saw the result in advance. Let me draw a visual to explain. We have a belief of what our real potential is, and that affects how much action we will take, and of course that affects the results, and that result reinforces our belief. We need certainty, and that's what will motivate you to execute strongly. How do you get certainty? We got it by results in our head, by visualizing it as if it had already happened. A great example is the British athlete Roger Bannister. He was the first person to run a mile in four minutes. He didn't just physically practice, but he practiced in his head because he could never achieve it physically, so he had to change it in his mind first. After Roger ran that first four minute mile, within the next two years, 37 more people ran a four minute mile when no one in history had done it before. And it's because Roger showed the world that running a four minute mile is in fact possible. In fact, it is certain that someone can do it. And how did he create his own certainty? By visualizing. If you believe you have very little potential to accomplish something, you're not gonna take very much action. And that leads to lousy results, thus confirming your belief. See, I told you I couldn't do it. And this turns into a toxic cycle because then you believe you have even less potential and your belief gets weaker. So I guess it's true what that cheesy quote says. What is it again? If you believe in yourself, you're halfway there. So we start believing. Every part of our body and mind is certain we will achieve our goal. You start focusing on it every single day, putting in the work, the late hours, going at it full speed. You begin accomplishing milestones and that pushes you even further thinking, wow, I did that. Your confidence is building and building and building because you keep achieving and then you failed. And this is what gets people. It's what got me in the past. This is probably where no one wants to see me. I basically kind of hit a low point and I was letting the fear eat away at me. And then I realized something. You have to get out of your bed. You sitting here thinking about it, you're just letting the fear eat away at you. Oh my gosh, you don't even know. Failure hurts our egos, makes us think we're not good enough. I finally realized that I had misinterpreted my mistakes as this really bad thing when it's not. Failure is great. In fact, it's fabulous. Because mistakes means you're actually trying. It's a form of moving forward. It's essentially a free education. Every feeling, every action triggers a thought in our head. So let's make this simple. Next time you make a mistake, you fail, you fall. One word. Good. Just say good. Didn't it score so well in that test? Good. Great. Motivation to study harder. Did it meet your mile run time? Fabulous. You just found a weak spot that you get to tackle and crush next time. Failure can also trigger feelings of self-doubt. Allow self-doubt to trigger gratitude. Why? Because the feeling of self-doubt actually serves an evolutionary purpose. This universal feeling is what compels humans forward. 
Don't allow it to diminish your sense of self, but do allow it to push you to seek improvement. So next time I doubt myself, I say thank you. Because now I understand that this is nature's way of pushing me forward, making me hungry for progress. Without this feeling, I would have no motivation to get better, and a life lived in a stagnant comfort zone is a very meaningless, boring life. And so we pick ourselves back up. Wash your face, brush your hair, put a cute outfit on. This one little thing can totally impact your confidence. How you dress can affect how others perceive you, but it can also affect how you perceive yourself. You are affected by your triggers and surroundings. Wearing different clothes can prompt you to think or behave differently. A professor at Columbia Business School found that participants in a study who wore a white lab coat exhibited more focused attention. In other words, when people dressed like a doctor, they behaved more like a doctor. If you want to feel more confident, dress the way a confident version of yourself would. Furthermore, we must enter our discomfort zone. Trying again after you failed is uncomfortable, but that's the point. You don't get better, more confident when you're doing the easy stuff, the stuff you're good at. You get more confident when you work on your weaknesses, trying new things, facing insecurities. Our brains are wired to protect us from hard new things, which is exactly why you need to go try something new to build confidence. A great way is to learn a new skill. My go-to place for learning new skills is Skillshare because of their in-depth classes that help me understand a subject far deeper than surface level. For those of you who don't know, Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of classes ranging from art to business. So set out a new goal. I've been diving deeper into creative writing, and if you guys are also into creative writing, I highly recommend Yasmin Cheyenne's class, Writing for Self-Discovery. I've learned so many new writing techniques to help better express my feelings and thoughts. But the beautiful thing about learning something new isn't the end result, but the qualities you develop in the process such as dedication, grit, bravery, all qualities that make up a confident person. By the way, Skillshare is $10 a month, so if you're interested, click the link below and the first 1,000 people to click the link get a two free month trial, so grab that while you can. And thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Lastly, we must celebrate our progress. Always take the time to reflect on the amazing things you have accomplished because it reminds you who the heck you are. And that's what confidence is. Not caring what others think of you or wanting to prove yourself to someone because you know exactly who you are and your opinion of yourself is all that matters. I'm growing up, I swear I didn't mean to Everybody's born, baby, except you Just see all the ways I can